Today, I want to teach you how to make this incredible smelling, crunchy and very soft inside pide. And afterwards, together with Burak, we're going to make something like an Iskander. It's a recipe that I have made up when I was 15. So it's so easy to make, so you guys can make it as well, very, very easily. Now, Mr. Arpak, the dough. Yes, we are starting with the dough. And to make it a bit quicker, we are going to need lukewarm water. To do that, I have around 300 ml of cold water and I'm adding some hot water in it. So make it... 350. 350, okay. It has to be a little warmer than your finger. That's the heat. And that's how you feel it. This amount of water is needed for two Ramazan pides. Yeah, like we have the lukewarm water. I'm adding one tablespoon yeast into the water and one teaspoon sugar. When we use a dried yeast, dried yeast is sleeping and by adding it with water, we wake it up. And the sugar helps the yeast to wake up with energy. When they wake up, the first thing they want to do is eat and sugar helps to do that. You can add honey or molasses, that will work the same way. And I have 500 grams of flour and adding a teaspoon salt into that and mixing. And then I'm adding water in here, taking every bit of it with a fork. I'm gonna add the flour into the water mixture until it gets thickened. It gets thickened. Now it's time for my hands. When it's thickened enough to touch, I'm gonna knead it about 10 minutes until it gets smooth and elastic, like every dough we made. When the dough is smooth, divide the dough into two equal parts and let them rest in bowls until they double in size. While doing that, cover them with a damp cloth so the dough doesn't get dry. When the dough rises, it's time to make this great pide. But the topping is really important. And to do that, I had a tablespoon of butter. I melted it. Now I'm going to add three tablespoons of water in it. And I have two egg yolks. This is going to make the top of the pide very, very tasty. So to this egg yolks, I add the butter and the water mixture. And this is ready. And then we also need some nigella and sesame seeds. And I put them on my side. To make the pide, everything I need is here. I also need a baking paper. I crush it to give a nice shape. Then I put a bit of water to my counter. Why do I do this? For it to stick and stay like that. I want to enlarge the pide. And how it's traditionally done is either with breadcrumbs or with some semolina. I love using semolina as well, it's really nice. Today we have the breadcrumbs, so this helps the dough to enlarge without sticking to the bottom. And then, without losing the rise of the dough, I am taking it out and putting it in the middle like this. I'm going to wet my fingers with the mixture and enlarge the dough. This way also my hands don't stick and the dough has this shiny and tasty surface. I'm going to try to make it as round as possible, but it's not important if it's not in its great shape. Now the pinky fingers are really important. Again, wet my pinkies with two of my pinkies like this, and then make a round edge. When you make a bread, the more surface area you have, it's a better tasting thing. So what we're trying to do, we're making some lumps and bumps. And then we are going to make first straight lines. What I'm trying to do, I'm really pressing with my finger to the bottom. Either make a square or a baklava shape. I think I like making squares. Burak loves it with baklavas. But you really have to press hard because eventually when it gets into the oven, it's going to rise again. We don't want it to be a normal looking bread but rather a pide. And then add some more egg mixture, so that's even tastier. Some sesame seeds and nigella. They say that nigella is great. Nigella oil helps the cells of the person to heal. Finally, just check whether every place of the dough has its share of the egg mixture. And then when it's ready, it's ready to go to the oven. I take it here. You can take it with your hands if you like. I have something very nice here. I put the oven into 280 degrees and warm up the stone really well. Then when it gets in, I turn it back into 250 because 
Each time I open the door, it gets colder and I want it to be like a really stone oven that these pides are cooked. So now this gets in and it's gonna cook about in 12 to 14 minutes. If you don't have a stone, what you should do is put the pide at the bottom of the oven for about six to seven minutes, then put it onto the highest rack. The oven is top and bottom without a fan. When there's a fan, it's gonna get dry. We don't want it. We want it to be crunchy outside and warm at the inside. I want to talk a bit about pide tradition. Pide is a gorgeous, gorgeous bread that is only done in the bakeries for one month. The 11 months, we don't do it. And special pide ustas just work one month a year. And I don't know what they do in the rest of the year. The pide ustas start to make pide after three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And there's a queue, a long line actually, in front of the bakeries every day because people want to eat freshly made just out of the bakery pide when they break their fast. The capitalist system normally says like, if this is so successful in one month, why not make it in 12 months? But it's so good, so great that we're not doing it on the other hand, because it's something we wait for a long time. So it's so nice. Hope one day you come to Istanbul and experience this, but this is a recipe that you will love and it's gonna warm your house. There's nothing more heartwarming and housewarming than a freshly cooked bread and pide. So, I think my pide is almost done. Yes! Da -da -da -da. Brack wins like a square, it's perfect bites, yes. It's so nice, you can make a very nice pide sandwich. This recipe is inspired from the Iskandar kebab. What is Iskandar kebab? It's pide at the bottom, a very nice tomato sauce, and on top there is incredible döner. In some cultures it's called gyro, and others shawarma, but we love it as döner. Then there's the butter on top, so nice. Okay, it's hard to make döner hetom. We have a, actually a recipe here if you want to make it like that, it's so nice. But much easily we can make with a bit of minced meat, or even you can do it with chunks of meat. So I want to prepare the recipe starting from the bottom. I put some butter and Burak is gonna put... <laughs> oh, Making the minced meat is very easy. On the channel we also have a recipe to make the perfect minced meat, but I want to summarize it briefly for you. Put the double grinded minced meat on the pan with a lot of onions, stir it on medium heat for a long time until the onions almost disappear and add some black pepper, salt and nutmeg which makes it great. Now, this is very much like a kebab. Some mincemeat, maybe you do at home, might look not like this, but more grayish. It's not because it's a different type of meat, it's because you cook it a little less than it deserves, in a way. So, this way it becomes more kebabby. Now, each bread is getting its own share from the butter. To the butter, we put some tomato puree, bit of pepper, bit of salt, a pinch of sugar to balance the acidity, and I'm going to let this boil. This is gonna be the tomato sauce. If your tomato sauce is very thick, you can add a bit of water, and in here, because there was some leftovers in the glass, I don't want to lose it. I know in India, there's a similar concept called bereket, which is the mother of the concept of sustainability. In Anatolia, maybe you know, Oh, we have bereket goddesses. We are the grandchildren of those. We believe that we shouldn't throw anything away. This is also a really good recipe for using the stale bread. If you have a stale bread, cut it in squares and then wet it a bit and put it on the pan with a lot of butter and it becomes this gorgeous, crunchy outside, soft inside bread. I'm adding a couple of hot water to the yogurt so it doesn't cool down the Iskander and loosens a bit. Now, usually the Iskander is served in oval plates. The breads are at the bottom. Then a bit of tomato paste and then some minced meat and this yogurt. I did something different than what I normally do. Maybe a bit of parsley around 
finally a bit more tomato sauce. If you want, you can some put fresh made butter on top, but Ooh. we shouldn't, no, we shouldn't, yes, I think. Please, Summer sure. is coming, so no. <laughs> this is a simple one that, as I said, when my father and mother was coming from work, I wanted to please them and there was a bit of mincemeat in the fridge and I made this with the stale bread at home for the first time. So this is it, guys. Another Ramazan has come. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed the pide. Know that in Turkey, seven years ago, I think, when we looked online for a mm. pide recipe, there was nothing. So we went out to the bakery and worked together with them and developed this recipe. And then now there are tons, but know that the origins of Turkish pide went viral through us, huh? Yes, we can say that. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.